okay so in this lecture we are going to discuss about curves and surfaces now the study of these three dimensional curves and surfaces is very important in the study of partial differential equations course so we will first start with the study of curves in the space so let me write it curves in space so what is a curve in space so what we will do we will first assume that f1 f2 and f3 are continuous functions on an interval say that interval is i which is a subset of r okay and then we will let x be equal to which is a function of t y is also function of t which is f 2 t and z i'm going to take the third function f 3 t so x y z are depending on t then if you take r bar t equal to f 1 i f 1 t i plus f 2 t j plus f 3 t k this can also be written as f1 t f2 t and f3 t i will write them in this form so this will also be an alternative form for a curve in a three dimensional space now let us see some of the very simple curves in three dimensional space so that you will understand this particular concept now we know that uh, if i so let me just write an example here so a line in a three dimensional space which is uh, passing through the point uh, point x naught y naught z naught suppose i have a line which is passing through the point x naught y naught z naught and the direction ratios are given by say lmn then we can write the line basically these are direction cosines but right now when when i take a line i will take the direction ratios so the direction cosines are elements so the line is given by of what form the line is of the form x minus x naught upon l y minus y naught upon m and z minus z naught upon n so this is basically the line given in the three dimensional space and i will assume it to be t so this will give me that x is equal to lt plus x naught y is equal to mt plus y naught and z is equal to nt plus z naught so this is my function of t f1 t this is f2 t and this is what the third one is f3 t so if we just take a line suppose i take a line uh, given by x minus 2 upon 3 as say y minus 4 upon 2 and z minus 5 upon 2 so what is this line passing through so this line passes through which point the line passes through the point 2 4 and 5 and what are the direction ratios of that line so here see 3 2 2 are not direction cosines because if they were direction cosines then l square plus m square plus n square should be how much equal to it should be equal to 1 so here 3 2 2 are basically direction ratios right so this line in the three dimensional space should look in this fashion so this is how the line should look it is passing through the point 2 4 5 and it is parallel to the vector 3 i plus 2 j plus 2 k so the direction ratio of this line is what 3 2 2 okay now if we take one more example so let me write one important example so if i take an example of a curve which is uh, of the form r bar t equal to 4 cos t then 4 sin t and the last coordinate i'm letting constant i'm giving it at 6 so how does this curve look so if you see that the first two coordinates x and y satisfy the property that x square plus y square is equal to 4 and the last coordinate is nothing but z equal to 6 
so this should basically look like a circle you see this looks like a circle as i'm showing you here this circle is uh, x squared plus y squared equal to 4 and it is at the height z equal to 6 right so this is the curve in the three dimension space that we have written if you want we can also see it from the other side so let's just see see it is at height 6 i can also show you the top view the top view will be it is the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 4 right so this is how this is a curve in a three dimensional space for example if you look at uh, the curve r bar t is equal to suppose i take let me take t then let me take sine t and the third coordinate let me keep it as 5 so now here you see that this is the x coordinate this is the y coordinate and this is the z so this will again be a curve at height z equal to 5 and how will this curve look like this basically is y equal to sine of x so y is nothing but sine of t where t is x so so this will be uh, basically looking like a sine curve but the sine curve will be shifted at what height it will be shifted at z equal to 5 right so let us see it quickly so this is the curve as we expected it should look like a sine curve and it should be lifted up by how much units it should be lifted by 5 units see i will show you the top view so it will look like the exact sine curve on the x and the y axis x axis is red color and y axis is green in color so you see this is the curve uh, of y equal to sine x from the top view okay so it exactly looks like sine x so i hope now this curve is also understood one of the most important curves that is usually seen in the study of uh, curves is uh, the curve given by r bar t equal to cos t then sin t and uh, e raised to t and t let me just write a t and this is one of the very important curves uh, which usually we will come across so this curve basically says that x coordinate is y x coordinate is cos t y coordinate is sin t and z coordinate is t you do you observe that the first two coordinates satisfy the equation x square plus y square equal to 1 so basically this part the x and y component are basically lying on a circle but uh, the z coordinate is continuously increasing with respect to time so it won't be a circle because if you want a circle in that case you must have a constant over here like in the earlier example we had something like this okay so so if the z coordinate is not constant and if the z coordinate is also varying with respect to time then this would look something like circular but it will it will not be circle so let us see quickly how what is this curve so this curve is actually a spiral right so you see that it starts at 1 0 0 i will show you that point also where it starts properly so from the top view if i look it will actually look like a circle because we know x square plus y square is equal to 1 so this is a circle x square plus y square equal to 1 and if i the z coordinate also increases with respect to the time okay so let me just zoom and show you the curve at t equal to 0 will start at the point uh, 1 0 0 because cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is also 0 t 0 so this is the curve how it looks like and the last important curve that i will now tell you is also is something like if we write 10 e raised to minus t cos t then 10 e raised to minus t sin t and 5 e raised to minus t now i hope you will get a brief idea of what this curves looks like so if you look at the first and the second component because of cos t and sin t you will have a circular nature of the curve the curve will will be like circular but it won't be a circle because the z coordinate is what the z coordinate is decreasing correct so if you really observe this carefully as t is increasing so as t tends to infinity what will happen the point on this curve will stand so, so this point on this curve will start approaching the point 
zero 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 because all the three coordinates have e raised to minus t in their as as their components. So this curve will steadily as time increases will start going to in, in uh, to zero zero zero. What will happen at t equal to zero? At t equal to zero, this curve will basically become ten comma zero comma five. So this curve should somewhat start from this point at t equal to zero. So how this curve looks like? What is the nature of this curve? So can we see that now? So you now see that this curve is looking like a spiral which is going towards the origin. So I will show you the front view. So how does the curve look, look from the front? It should look like this. So it is steadily going to zero as time is increasing. From the top view, you will see only the x and the y coordinates, which is x square plus y square. Uh, and the radius will be e raised to minus 2t, so into 10 square. So this is how the, the thing is. So this is how the inward spiral looks like and it steadily approaches 0, 0, 0 as time t tends to infinity and it is starting at the point as I told you 10, 0 and 5. You see the starting of the curve is 10, 0, 5. OK, in the second section, now we are going to start for study of surfaces. So what is the surface basically we have to discuss over here? So let x be a point in space. Then this point is uh, set to be a point on a surface. If it satisfies an equation f of x, y, z equal to zero, where what is this f? This f is a continuously differentiable function so that uh, we will get a smooth surface. So we are going to consider here continuously differentiable function okay now this surface can be expressed in parametric form as follows so we will be looking at surfaces which can be expressed as parametric form in two variables so let me write so let x be equal to some function f1 of uv where u and v are those two parameters and y is some f2 of uv and z is f3 of u comma v okay so this is how we are going suppose if you are able to write the head variable in terms of say some functions lambda x y and mu x comma y so this is said to be the explicit form of that surface so it is not always possible to write us in this form explicitly there is some condition that when can you write a surface in the form of z equal to something which depends on x and y okay so let us see some examples now so that it will be clear to you what is meant by this surface determined by parametric equations involving two variables. So let me take one simple example. The simplest example of a surface that we all know is a sphere. OK, so let me take a sphere. Let me take the standard sphere. So let me take x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to one. OK, so I want to determine what are the parametric equations for the sphere. So what I will do I will start with some simple calculations. So I will say consider x squared plus y squared equal to consider. Sorry, we know that uh, we all know that sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to how much? Sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. So that will that will be helping us here. Okay. So let me write 
that first sine square theta plus cos square theta is one and this i will further modify it like the sine square theta into one plus cos square theta is one okay and this one i will write as uh, again this one i will write it as sine square theta into let me write cos square phi plus sine square phi that is also one plus as it is cos square theta is one so from this i get that sine square theta cos square phi plus sine square theta sine square phi plus cos square theta is equal to one so this suggests me that this is of the form x square this is of the form square and this is of the form z square and that is equal to one so this means that x can be written as what x can be written as sine theta cos phi y can be written as sine t sine phi and, and z can be written as cos theta so this is the these are the parametric equations for the standard sphere what x squared plus y square equal to x squared plus y square plus z square equal to one so if i have the sphere which is x squared plus y square plus z square equal to a square then i will just have a sine theta a cos sine theta sine phi and a cos theta so last coordinate if uh, z is uh, if theta is the uh, value of z will become a and if theta is pi then cos pi is minus one so this will become z equal to minus a so this means that when theta is varying like this so this is this point is the z coordinate so i'm assuming that this is x coordinate this is the y coordinate and this is the z coordinate so here the point lies when theta is equal to zero and when theta becomes pi the point becomes zero zero so let me say this is zero zero a suppose and this is zero zero minus a why this is zero zero because here sine theta sine theta at theta equal to zero will become zero when i put theta equal to pi again sine pi sine pi will become zero so the three points you will get x y z because of theta equal to zero you will get zero zero a and the second point will be zero zero minus a so this is how you get two points when theta goes from zero to pi so this means that theta is basically working as a vertical angle so this is the value of theta theta is zero is here and as i vary the angle from theta zero to pi it will the points on the sphere will go down and as so at theta equal to zero you will get the north pole and when theta is equal to pi you will get the south pole so this is how the angle theta varies from what point to what point theta varies from zero to pi okay now what does the what uh, what is the importance of the angle phi in this particular problem so when i take when i look at phi now this phi is usually called as a horizontal angle so this phi is the horizontal angle now what is the horizontal angle here in this problem is that a point so this is the equator of the sphere okay so this is the sphere see so the point here the angle here with respect to x axis is zero and this angle is going to vary horizontally from zero to two pi so this horizontal angle is zero to two pi which is phi okay so let me write it here phi goes from what zero to two pi okay so this is the concept of vertical angle and horizontal angle now what we will do is we will look a small uh, animation in which i will show you how does the sphere looks when theta starts slowly varying from 0 to pi and again we will look at one more animation in which we will see what will how the sphere gets developed when the angle phi increases from 0 to Okay, so see in the thing now, and here I can see the North Pole. So now the sphere will start slowly developing from the North Pole. This means the angle of theta is increasing from zero to pi by two. I've kept it till pi by two, so the half of the upper hemisphere is uh, there. So I will show you the upper hemisphere. 
OK, and now we will so you can even see it. Let me take it from the front view so you can now see the angle. Is from 0 to pi theta is from 0 to pi. Beta. Now we'll increase it so the slowly the sphere gets developed in the southern hemisphere also. OK, so this is the entire sphere for which theta has, has varied from 0 to pi. I will also again go back. Let me go back and see if theta goes from again from pi to zero i will so i'm going reverse way now so here the sphere is again going towards the north pole so theta is varying from pi to zero so this is how this entire sphere is developed just have a look at this again i'm going from zero to pi so i hope now the idea of angle theta varying from zero to pi is clear to you OK, now you can see this, this is a vertical slit of the sphere. So the this line is X axis. I'm increasing the angle. So that angle is increasing from 0 to 90 degrees. That is phi. Then it's increasing more. Now it is becoming 0 to 180. So phi has become 180 now. Then it is more increasing. It is going to 270 degrees now. So and the last is the phi will touch the value of 2 pi and this will be full sphere. Now we'll go again back reverse from 2 pi. I will get back to 270. Then again I'm going to 180 degrees. And then 90 degrees and I'm going back to zero. The next type of uh, important surface often we will be using in this course will be a cylinder. Now we all know what are the cylindrical coordinates given by. So what are the cylindrical coordinates given by? So they are given by x is equal to a cos theta, y is equal to a sin theta and z is equal to z. So what are the two variables that I'm using here? Two variables are theta and z. So x is a function of theta and z. Y is also a function of theta and z. Z is absent in the first two functions and the third function z is equal to f3 of theta and z. Here theta is absent. OK, so the values of z and theta as they vary, you will start getting the cylinder. For example, uh, if uh, or now can we now tell what are the values of theta? So theta works like a horizontal angle in the in the cylinder. So this is how theta will start varying from here to here, right? So theta goes from what? Theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And uh, what is z? Z is free to vary uh, as a real number. So so whatever the z is, uh, that will be the height of the cylinder. So if I if I restrict the values of z from suppose I restrict the values from z from minus 3 to 3, it will mean that the cylinder will start at 3 and minus 3. It will be like this. So from the cylinder, it will be between the z value between 3 and z is equal to minus 3. OK, let us quickly see one animation for the cylindrical coordinate. So uh, you can also see a pointer which is moving red color pointer which is moving along that circle. So X and Y coordinates are varying along A cos theta and Y is equal to B is sin, A sin theta. So there it is 3 cos theta and 3 sin theta. So this is how the entire cylinder and the vertical lines are the that is the Z coordinate. OK, so we will uh, now mix the two things together. So we have studied in the first section we have studied curves. In the second section we have studied surfaces and now curves lying on the surfaces. OK, so I will uh, assume that uh, let C. So let me write it here. So let uh, C be a curve and the curve be given as parameter form is say XS, YS and ZS. So these are the parametric equations of that curve and let F be a surface. So F also depends on X, Y, Z. So F, X, S, Y. So F is a surface which depends on X, Y, Z. So f of x, y, z is equal to zero. So what will happen? This curve be on is on the surface. So let's see be a curve on the surfaces. 
so this means that this curve satisfies the equation of this surface so this therefore when i put f i will get x s y s and z s so since it satisfies this so will come equal to what this will also come equal to zero because the curve is lying on the surface okay and this will be true for all all s on the for, for that curve okay now if i differentiate this particular equation with respect to s what will happen if i differentiate with respect to s what will i get i will get by chain rule this will be dab by f by dab by x and dx by ds because x is only a function of one variable so dx by ds plus dab by f by dab by y into dy by ds plus dab by f by dab by z into dz by ds and that will be equal to what that will be equal to zero correct so one minute let me just correct it is equal to zero now look at this particular thing this can be thought of as dot product of two vectors now what two vectors are we looking at we are looking at dab by f by dab by x i plus dab by f by dab by x dab by y j plus dab by f by dab by z k and what is the other vector which we can look at as i will look at look at as x dash s i plus y dash s j plus z dash s k and these two product of these two dot product of these two vectors is be is becoming zero what is this person who is this person so i'm trying to geometrically tell you what is the meaning of this equation that we have written so what is this person this is nothing but the gradient of the surface f so that is grad f and we know that this is normal to the surface this is grad f is always normal to the surface it is perpendicular to the surface at that point multiplied by what is this person this person is nothing but tangent vector to the curve because x xsi yj zsk is the curve so what is r bar prime stands for it stands for the tangent vector to the curve and so this is nothing but the tangent vector to the curve correct so how does this picture look like let us see quickly so you can now see this red color surface it's like a spherical cap and that white color thing so this is a spherical cap and this white color arc is a curve on that spherical cap the yellow color uh, vector that you see is the tangent to that curve and this green color vector is a normal to that curve when you see that the tangent vector and the normal vector both are perpendicular to each other see this yellow color i am showing my hand it is yellow that is a tangent vector and this green color is the normal vector which is gradient vector grad f and they are perpendicular to each other let us see from the other views let me show you the yes so here you can see that they are perpendicular to each other if i go with some other view let me take the view from the top i can see that this yellow vector is exactly tangent to this curve white color curve is tangent uh, is this the curve and yellow color is a tangent and this green color vector is exactly perpendicular to the surface so that is gradient of f right so this is the geometrical interpretation of that particular equation grad f dot r bar t is equal to what zero okay so with the preparation of uh, curves and surfaces the study of that entire thing is now i hope is cl extremely clear to us and now we can uh, define what is meant by a partial differential equation so let me just define what is a partial differential equation so it is an equation of the form f x y t theta theta x theta y you can all even have the mixed derivatives x t and so on is equal to 0 okay which has two or more independent variables okay with two or more independent variables and one dependent variable 
so here the one dependent variable that I am considering here is theta. Okay, so theta depends on x, theta depends on y. So theta is of theta depends on t. So theta is depending on those independent variables. Okay, such a thing is called as a pars partial differential equation. Okay, now we will be only considering in this particular uh, lectures. I will be considering only two dependent variable, uh, two independent variables and one dependent variable. So in this course, we will be looking at two independent variables and one dependent variable. So what are the two independent variables we are going to consider? We are going to consider the two independent variables as X and Y and the dependent variable we are going to consider as Z. Okay. And uh, the notation that we will use here is when a difference. So Z is now a function of what? The Z is a function of X comma Y. Right. So when I differentiate Z with respect to X, the notation that I will follow will I will just denote it by what? I will denote it by P and uh, for when I differentiate Z with respect to Y, that notation I will denote by Q. So if I take a function which is depending on X, Y, this Z which depends on X and Y and the first derivative of Z and the first derivative of Z with respect to X and Y and if I make it equal to zero. So this equation is the equation which is now general form of which type of partial differential equation? This will be the partial differential equation of first order. Okay, so this is because I have only used one derivatives of Z. So this is the most general form of first order PDE. Okay, so in the first uh, chapter, I will be basically looking at all first order uh, partial differential equations. Okay, as as and when the need comes, we may go to higher order partial differential equations in coming lectures. So we will be doing complete study of first order partial differential equations. Now there are different types of first order partial differential equations. For example, there are partial differential equations which are called as linear partial differential equations, then semi linear partial differential equations. Then you also have something called as quasi linear partial differential equation and non linear partial differential equation of all. What are all the all, all of them? only first order partial differential equation. Okay, so we will be studying these four types of partial differential equations in the coming lectures. So with this introduction of the first section of partial differential equations course, we will move on to the next sections.